Welcome to the first video for Module 1 in EDD 939 Strategic Leadership. And um, I would uh, encourage you, if you haven't already, to have the PowerPoint that I supplied for you uh, there in Canvas under Module 1 pulled up or, or printed off um, just so that you can see it because I'm going to be referring to that throughout the lecture and I'll do that in, in pretty much all of my lectures. I'll have a PowerPoint for you that coincides with what I'm talking about. So uh, if you want to take a minute and pause me and then grab that, that would be great. Or maybe you already have it pulled up there. And um, you'll see that this week, both on the syllabus as well as um, that first slide in the PowerPoint, this is our introduction to strategic leadership. And uh, the first video that you watched, hopefully you've watched that one, is just uh, that's an orientation to the course. Now let's dig into the course content itself and talk a little bit about this idea of strategic leadership. What is it? Why is it important? Um, and why should we have a course on it? Uh, and I kind of got into this a little bit with um, the, in the orientation video, and I think I said in there that I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, so uh, I'll dig into it here. And the reality is a course on strategic leadership a lot of times is found more in a um, master of business administration kind of program or a doctor of business administration, a DBA, but something related to business. Uh, we tend to think of strategic leadership, strategic management, things like that in the business arena. And especially within the business arena, we tend to think of it at the high levels of the organization. And I'll have more to say on that in a minute. But I think it's very important for all of us to know what strategic leadership is, what strategy is, um, how do we incorporate it into our programs into our organizations, whether that be, uh, as many of you are, you're in healthcare colleges or healthcare higher institutions, or maybe a, de a department of healthcare or health sciences within another kind of university. Um, some of you are in the nonprofit sector, so you are working in organizations, moving them forward, or, or maybe governmental sector, uh, public health, things like that. Uh, some of you are in hospital settings, healthcare um, systems, and so um, those tend to run a little bit more on, on the business side of things. But all of us within our organizations need to be clear on what strategy is and what strategic leadership is uh, for a couple of reasons, and these aren't in the PowerPoint. This is just kind of my, my intro. Um, we need to be aware because whether you're a for-profit or not-for-profit um, or a government organization, anything like that, all of us are trying to make money. Now, that may seem a little bit jarring, but let me explain. Um, we, we have to make money so that we can function, right? Um, a a non-profit, and, and you all know this because you're working in non-profits, uh, or, or you know, those of you who are, you know, Clarkson College is a non-profit healthcare institution, but we are very much driven by, um, do we have enough students? What, what are our credit hours looking like? Enrollment, um, you know, we're, we're getting ready to move into our budget time and figuring all of that out. So money drives everything that all of us do, not from a mission and goal, and we'll be talking about all of those things in time, but we've got to keep ourselves afloat. And strategy ties into all of that. But again, I think sometimes we think of strategy or strategic thinking and strategic leadership as, well, that's for the, the Googles and the Microsofts and the Amazons of the world. And it's, it's for all of us. And that's what we need to recognize and realize. And um, I'm, I'm excited about this course, a little bit nervous, as this is my first foray into this area. But um, I love strategy. And uh, my family will tell you that um, when we play board games together, I particularly like games that require a strategy 
and I will develop a strategy. One game that our family likes to play together, it's one of my favorites, it's called Ticket to Ride. It's a, we also call it the train game because that's what it is. You're building train tracks across the country. And most of the time, I win. And I'm not saying that in a bragging way. The reason for that is I have a very specific strategy that I use and I stick to that strategy. I tested it out. We played the game several times before I refined and figured out my strategy. Now I have that strategy and I rarely, if ever, deviate from it. Um, I don't play poker, but I know people who do, and poker can seem like a game of chance, but in reality, there's a lot of strategy to poker. So th there's strategy in everything we do. I actually enjoy playing video games. Sometimes my boys really like video games, and um, they're not as much into this one video game now as they used to be, but, you know, Minecraft. It's pretty still pretty popular, and they enjoy it. I never liked Minecraft because there really wasn't much of a strategy to me. You know, they showed it to me. I, I know there's some game part of it you can play, but they're like, well, you go around and you build stuff. That's kind of boring to me. I, I like even video games. I like where there's like a strategy and, and I, I go through it and I have to figure things out and then and then I, I achieve that level and I move on. That's just how I, how I like to think. So I'm, I really like this concept of strategic leadership. But there's more to it than charts and graphs and analyzing we'll talk more about that so i hope you're excited for it too so let's really dig into this so the the next slide past the intro says what is strategic leadership and that's really what in these first couple of videos what i want to spend our time talking about what is strategic leadership and um i want to start with some misconceptions and um, you, you'll see those there on that next slide that's titled Some Misconceptions. And one of those misconceptions, I think, is that, and I referenced this already, that strategic leadership is something that only takes place at the very top of the organization. So when we talk about strategy, when we talk about strategic thinking, when we talk about strategic leadership, that takes place in the... Um, corner offices, the big offices, if you will, and I'm using old stereotypes, I realize. But uh, strategic leadership is, is when the execs all get together, or maybe department heads or directors, and they all get together, and, and they have some sort of magic ball or crystal ball or, you know, some sort of system that they have to... Um, peer into the future and, and figure out where we should head and what we should be doing and things like that. And then, you know, we um, are, are, you know, we're, we're kind of, like, you know, Easter recently passed. They show the Ten Commandments a lot on TV, right? We're, we're like the children of Israel and we're waiting for Moses co to come down from the mountain and, and bestow on us, you know, what, what, the, what the divine orders are. And that's a misconception, the strategic leadership only takes place at the very top of the organization. And so the way the way to get to the presidency or CEO, again, depending on what kind of organization we're talking about, the way to get there is you have strategic thinking ability, <clears throat> strategic leadership ability. And if so if you don't want to be at that level, don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about strategic thinking or strategic leadership. That's a misconception. Another misconception is that second one there, and, and you'll have to forgive the reference, but it's having some sort of Sherlock vision. What I'm referring to there is some of you may know, some of you may not. Um, I've always liked the Sherlock Holmes stories. Um, again, I think because there's kind of a strategy thinking kind of idea involved, um, you know, if, if you know what I'm talking about, because he's solving crimes and um, I just, I really like him. But anyway, um, a couple of movies, Sherlock Holmes movies were made a few years ago. And, and I don't mean the BBC series with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. That's an excellent series. Um, but these were movies with Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes. And then Jude Law was, um, Dr. Watson. And if you've seen those movies, you know what I'm talking about. In case you haven't, 
Um, and they, I think they call it Holmes Vision or Sherlock Vision or something like that, jokingly. Not in the movie, but the, the actors. They have parts in both movies where, like, Sherlock Holmes is going to go and, and typically, like, he's going to, he's getting in a fight with someone. And he runs through the whole fight in his head before it actually happens. And, you know, you have Robert Downey Jr.'s voice going, you know, fist to jaw and, you know, discombobulate and, and those kind of things. He's And he sees it all and they play it out in slow motion and then all of a sudden, and he, he does it for real. And I think that's a misconception about strategic thinking and strategic leadership that that we have that kind of Sherlock vision. So it again, it's this it's this super not supernatural, but this super intelligent ability to be able to look through and and I can think two or three or four steps ahead. Or or maybe it's not you know Sherlock vision. Maybe it's chess. You know, a chess master, someone who's really good at chess can look at the board and and I'm told what makes an excellent chess player is they're always thinking several moves ahead of their opponent and uh, why are they doing that because if I move here then you'll move here and then I've got to move here right I mean and so we think of it that way and and for a lot of us like me we're like whew I, I, you know, my brain hurts even thinking about thinking about that. There's, there's no way I can do it. It's a misconception. And then a, a third misconception I think is probably even more prevalent, and it is, um, and this, this goes. So I'll pause here. Getting ahead of myself. Th those first two misconceptions I think a lot of times will come from those of us who are at lower levels in the organization, and and we're looking up to the upper levels. And we, we say, um, uh, you know, oh, wow, you know, only the leaders have the strategic thinking ability. It only happens at the top. Or, um, you know, they have Sherlock vision and, and they have this really great, you know, chess master ability. But this third misconception, so th that comes from those of us lower in the organization. But I think this third misconception happens all the way at every level of the organization. I think um, sometimes executives are even more prone to this misconception, and it's this, that strategic thinking, strategic planning, strategic leadership, therefore, because understanding strategic thinking, strategic planning are all part of the process, that's something that happens at a retreat, and we create a binder. And the, the book, if, if you haven't started reading it yet, um, you know, becoming a strategic leader um, there from Center for Creative Leadership, they, they reference this. And I think a lot of us are in that category. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, if, you, if I asked you, and actually I will be asking you in discussion posts, and you're going to respond to this uh, in different ways, but does your organization have a strategic plan? And if you went right now to some of the top leaders in your organization, I would venture to guess many of them, not all, but many of them, would, if you have one, they would say, yeah, we have a strategic plan, just a second. And they'd reach over to their shelf. I don't have a shelf here, it's my wall. But they would reach over to their shelf and they would pull off a big thick binder and say, here you go. Here's our strategic plan. This is, this is what our strategic planning and strategic leadership is. It's a binder. And, and that happens, we go to retreats and, uh, you know, usually, you know, you go to offsite meetings and you, if you would walk into these rooms and I've been there, I've, I've participated in these, um, as far as, as for planning and you walk in and there's, you know, the large flip chart sheets that, that stick to the wall and the, the walls are, are all, they're all those pieces of paper all over the wall and they got drawings and sticky notes and we're, you know, little red button or stickers and, and we're prioritizing all that kind of thing. That's what we think of as strategic planning and strategic thinking and strategic leadership. No, no, don't misunderstand me. Those retreats, those times of intense thinking through aspects of our organizations and where are we heading? Um, those can be very helpful. I have personally benefited from those at different times. By the way, I, w I would encourage you because, again, that doesn't have to, that's tying back to the first misconception. That's not even something that needs to happen only at the top levels. Um, I've, I've done that with teams before. Teams that I've led and teams that I've just been on, um, we, we would have, when I worked at uh, State Farm Insurance in a learning and development area, Every fall, 
we would have, um, I shouldn't say fall, late summer, because that was kind of our lead in to the planning time. Um, we would have those sessions and brainstorming and think through what are our priorities for the year and things like that. Those can be very helpful. So don't misunderstand me and think that I'm saying never do that. The danger, and I think the book talks about this, the danger with those kind of um, retreats and sessions is what too often happens is then that's the sum total of our strategic planning. We put together a really cool looking binder or presentation or whatever, and then it sits collecting dust. Sometimes literally if it's a binder on the shelf or figuratively if it's a file that we save you know, in, in, in the company network and we never do anything with it. So it isn't just something that happens at a retreat. So some of those, those are some of the misconceptions that are out there. So then the next slide says, so what is it? And um, you might be thinking that. You might be thinking, okay, great, Mears, you've done a good job of telling us what the misconceptions are and, you know, what it's not. But what is it? We'll get to that here in just a second. But before we do, I, I do want to start off with the definition of leadership. Now, if you have taken EDD 932 with me, I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. Um, if you've taken EDD 932 with me, you've seen this definition of leadership. And I want to make sure that I point out, this is my definition of leadership. In that course, EDD 932, Leadership, um, I make sure you, I have you write out your own definition of leadership. So you, you don't have to agree with this definition 100%. Um, I think it's a pretty good definition, and I should I, I, I probably should also say this. This isn't my definition exclusively. This is actually a definition um, that a, a group of us worked on when I was at Bob Jones University when we were creating a center for leadership development. And the need for that was if we were going to develop leaders on our college campus, um, you know, I, I was the leader of that group and I said, we, we probably should have a common working definition because otherwise, how do we know if we're developing leaders if all of us have a different idea of what a leader is, right? And, and we, we were quick to tell people, as I'm telling you, you may not agree 100% with this definition, but, but this was the definition we were working from. I think it's a pretty good one. I like it, so I'm using it here. But the definition of leadership that I share in leadership class and that I'm also presenting here is an others-focused influence relationship that engages character and competence to grow people. An others-focused influence relationship that engages character and competence to grow people. And I want to bring it in here because if, as you read that definition, so read it again. I'm going to give you a second to read it and process it. So as you read that definition, what you will notice is there is nothing in there about levels in the organization. That definition of leadership can be fulfilled. We can use it to point to someone and say they're a leader, he or she is a leader, whether they're in an official named management, supervisory, leadership, whatever term you want to put on their role or not. Do you follow me? So uh, a, a frontline worker, an individual contributor with no supervisor responsibilities can be a leader based on that definition. So I, I want to point that out because there's some premises that I'm going to be working through in here. Uh, in in this introductory part. And one of them is this premise number one, leadership can and should occur at all levels of an organization. And I think that's very important to point out here that leadership can and should occur at all levels of an organization. Um, 
because when we talk about strategic leadership, that's something that the book emphasizes and that's something that I wanna make sure we emphasize in this course. Um, and that is, it's not something reserved for the top levels of the organization. It's something that should be occurring at all levels. And that makes sense because leadership as a whole can and should occur at all levels of an organization. So that's premise number one. So let's move on. Some more definitions. Some more definitions that I want to give you. And um, you'll see them there. The, the definition for strategy. And, um, you know, I, I think it's very important that we have these good working definitions. And um, I, I just gave you the definition of strategy, the definition of strategic thinking. And in particular, in that definition of strategy, I kind of like that second clause there, which is, is more referring to um, the evolutionary process. But I think it's important because it talks about we, we have to be ready to adapt and change. And that's what strategy is about. Too often, and probably should have added this as a misconception, I think too often, and this goes to the binder idea, strategy is something that we plan out now and then we don't deviate from that at all. You know, we have a three to five year plan. Th those are great. I'm not knocking three to five year plans. I think they're important, but we have to recognize within that three to five year plan, even within that annual plan, there's going to be things that hit us and cause change. And we're going to talk about that at the near the end of the next lecture um, when we talk about, as the book references, VUCA, V-U-C-A. But And I'm, I'll bring this up again then, so I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. But I think right now I am recording this from my bedroom because we're in the midst of quarantine because of the coronavirus. In January, when a lot of us were, well... Most places probably do their annual planning for the next year. If they started on the calendar year, they were doing that in the fall, November, let's say. In November, when organizations were doing annual planning, nobody was figuring that about mid-March, most employees would either have to be laid off or be working from home and virtually. What did that do to an annual plan, right? So we had our strategy, but we have to be able to adapt and change. And that's what stra that definition of strategy excuse me, and strategic thinking are all about because we have to pull in these ideas. So again, you're like, okay, so what is strategic leadership? And I'm going to finish up this video with, with these next three slides, the definition as I see it of strategic leadership and then two more premises for you. Strategic leadership is, and, and, and I didn't feel obligated to like totally use that whole definition of leadership, but here it is, influencing others to think through the critical factors that impact and affect your organization or team. Influencing others to think through the critical factors that impact and affect your organization or team. So, and, and I want to point this out. You are not being a strategic leader if you are the only one thinking through those factors that impact and affect your organization or team. If you're doing that, you're a strategic thinker, but you're not a strategic leader. In order to be a strategic leader, you need to be influencing others to also think through those things. So don't try and be the smartest person in the room. And I think sometimes leaders fall into that trap. I'm gonna amaze you by my strategic thinking ability. Okay, but you're not being a strategic leader. And connected to that is doing it in such a way the strategic, you know, influencing others so that others are developed as leaders and strategic thinkers themselves. And, and it all ties together. That's what strategic leadership is about. And that's why I picked the book I did, Becoming a Strategic Leader, because I love their emphasis on that, that a strategic leader is developing others to think strategically, whoops, and become leaders themselves. If you're not doing that, you don't meet the criteria to be a strategic leader. You may be an amazing strategist, an amazing planner, an amazing strategic thinker, but you're not a leader. And that's what I want to make sure that we drive home. So in the two, uh, premise two and premise three flow from that premise two, like leadership, 
strategic leadership should take place at all levels within an organization. No different there. No difference between the idea of leadership as a whole and strategic leadership. It can and should take, I probably put, it, put that it can, and it should take place at all levels within the organization. And then premise three, strategic leaders develop others to be strategic thinkers and leaders at all levels in an organization. That's what it's all about. And again, if you're not doing that, you may be an amazing strategist, an amazing strategic thinker, but you're not a strategic leader. So we'll pick up there in the next lecture and talk about some of the components to consider in strategic leadership and strategic thinking. We'll see you then.